Okay, another Mrs. H psychology revision. This is for AQA psychology, specifically paper three, addiction topic. And here we're looking at risk factor five, peer influence. And the question is, how much do you feel you're influenced passively by your peers? Or how much do you take an active choice in your behaviors? So hopefully this will help you answer it and also show you the risk factors with um, abuse and addictive behavior. Okay, so let's have a look at them. Just remember that we've had four other risk factors also for this topic. So we've looked already at genetic vulnerability separately, stress, personality, family influences, and now finally risk factor number five, peer influence. So I'm gonna talk you through these three. So social norms, social selection, the one that I was talking about with the question, and your perceived norms. So let's take social norms first of all. What are social norms? So these link with normative social influence. So think our social influence uh, topic with ASH. Um, social norms are our unwritten rules and expectations of a given group at a given time. So any specific group at any point in history really is what, what we're talking about with a given time. Uh, so for example, in terms of our substance abuse and addiction, um, what is the group like? What is the social norm of a particular group and your particular group or a teenager's, for example, a particular group in terms of their alcohol use, their drugs, gambling behavior, just um, rule breaking in general behavior. Okay, so cultural norms are going to be the same, but for a specific cultural group, and we'll have a look at that in a moment. So if we look at research, we've got research to support the social norms. Helza, for example, on cultural norms found that despite some similarities um, in these cultural groups with, for example, a Confucian moral ethic, there are more alcohol related problems in South Korea where alcohol consumption is encouraged and it's associated with male mastery and domination. But in Taiwan, um, alcohol is used just really with meals and in ceremonies. Drunkenness is seen as a weakness. And so there's very different social norm there. So our social and cultural norms are going to influence the way we behave in terms of our behaviors with that addictive substance and um, our, our behaviors in general, how much we consume, for example, how much we indulge in gambling and so on and so forth. Another piece of research from Brooke found that the onset of marijuana use in children aged from nine to 20, the early 20s, was also affected by peer, peer influence. And a third piece of research from Garnier and Stein. So research to see which, which of peer and family influences was the best predictor of problem behaviors in adolescence. So they looked at 198 children from conventional and non-conventional families, and they studied them up to the age of 18 in a longitudinal study. study. They um, interviewed uh, pregnant mums and later their teenage children, and they also completed questionnaires, all of them complete, completed questionnaires. Uh, data was also gathered on other information, for example, their family background, childhood, teenage relationships with their peers, and also their substance abuse problems. So what they found was the results were that the best predictor of substance abuse problems was the similarity in their behavior, in their peers' behavior. So how similar their peers were. But remember, this research was correlational. And as we've already mentioned, correlations do not show you a causal link. It's a big problem with correlations. They're just an indicator of a relationship between different factors. So the second factor is our social selection, meaning that we actively select our social groups. A lot of parents are very anxious that um, their children are going to be influenced by peers and that they respond just passively as if they don't have any choice. But the truth is that we socially select. And Reed and Roundtree found that social selection was more influential than group pressure on initiation, starting, and also ending up um, stopping substance abuse. So the truth is that we actually have more um, responsibility, more say, more activity in our own choices about who we hang around with. And the third factor are perceived norms. So the beliefs about what, is, what others are doing as opposed to what is actually happening. 
So people tend to overestimate peer use. Perkins, for example, in 2005, found with over um, 76,000 US college students um, that they consistently overestimated the amount of alcohol drunk by their peers. So people try to fit in with what they believe is the norm. So we, um, you know, our belief is that everybody else is doing X or that more people are doing X. And therefore, because we believe that, we think that is the norm and therefore we may change our behavior to fit with that. When actually, in reality, that isn't the norm. It's just what we perceive it to be. And of course, that perceived norm is going to lead to self-selection, right? So for example, if we believe uh, certain people are doing, certain groups are drinking more heavily and that's what we want, we may steer towards that group if, if, or if we want to experiment with smoking something, um, we may move towards that group who we perceive are um, actively involved in that uh, activity. So let's have a look at the evaluation of all of this. Hawkins, for example, um, says that understanding the influence of social factors has a good practical application because it could be used to identify groups who are at risk and therefore intervene early with them. Uh, for example, Tobler in 2000 devised a peer pressure resistance training program to help prevent young people taking up smoking. Also, Leshner, peers are important to help recovery um, because we need to be careful and have something in place so an addict does not return to the same peer group, the same, effectively the same addictive peer group, the same group who are abusing those substances and therefore they are um, going to most likely relapse. Uh, peer pressure is also different at different ages. So Rich Harris, a researcher Rich Harris, states that peer pressure increases during adolescence. So substance abuse in young adults is more likely, he believes, to be the result of peer influence than family because they've gone through that very intense peer, peer influence through their adolescence. The trouble is, one of the problems with this sort of research is it's very difficult to work out, to tease out which one is more influential, peers or family, because they're so closely interrelated. And we mustn't forget that peers are just one social factor um, involved with uh, substance abuse and addictive behaviour. Um, we mustn't forget there are many other factors, for example, social deprivation, economic factors, and also the other um, risk factors that we've talked about in the other videos. So that is the final um, little video in terms of our risk factors. And then we go on now to explanations for nicotine addiction, explanations for gambling addiction, and then reducing and so on. The other videos, have a look at my other videos to help you. I hope that helps.